the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. I'm assuming you're here to see how I fare troubleshooting my ice rivers and learn how to do it yourself. If you like that sort of thing, you might like some of my other content, repasting your ice river cast by ASIC, overclocking videos, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. And if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the like button. It really helps me out. I consider subscribing to my channel if you want more information about crypto mining and things like that in general, especially the cast basics. Okay, first thing I wanna talk about is the chip temperatures on these ice river ASICs. Um, these ice rivers have been out now um, since June and maybe even have been running before that um, with some testing, we'll call it from Ice River. Um, so they might have been running for a long time before they got to you. And if you've been running them for a long time yourself, I would highly recommend trying out this mining tool, um, this Ice River monitoring tool that T Swift came out with and is free. Um, I'll show you this real quick. Um, my temps actually aren't too bad right now because my garage is nice and cool. My ambient temps are low, um, it's winter time. But my hash rate definitely has improved um, because it's gotten colder. Um, I'm getting like 6,240 giga hash, uh, my 30 minute average. And um, in the summertime, when this thing was running, it was more like 5,800 to 6,000 maybe. So um, I, I know for sure it was mostly in the fives, high fives. So I'm getting better hash rate when it's colder out. And that's kind of telling me without without actually seeing the chips that maybe my chips were running hot and i've got a fruition designs kit on this thing cranked up and i'm still seeing kind of um i'm in the warning zone on one of my chips on board three here you can see how easy this monitoring tool is to use um, you can see each chip on each board i'm on board three on my ks3m and my chip number 56 temperature is 91 and that is with cool ambient temperatures so that's telling me i need to repaste this thing i haven't done it yet um, but you might have seen my buddy RPM's video. Let me go ahead and go, uh, show you a clip from that. Okay, so we're on my buddy RPM's YouTube page. And if you're not following him, you should. 235,000 people can't be wrong. <laughs> if you're subbed to me, you're probably already subbed to him, I'm sure. But um, anyway, uh, this is the video. It's called Ice River. You need to fix this now. And the thumbnail says terrible thermal paste. And he uses the miner tool that I just showed you to diagnose that his KS3M chips are overheating big time. and. Um, let me just show you a clip from his video. RPM, I hope you don't mind. I'm showing your clip, buddy. Okay, just confirmed. This is Celsius. So this is really bad. T-Swift told me that this over 95 degrees Celsius on some of these chips is a bad thing. Very, very bad. Okay, so you heard it from the man, RPM himself. Um, those 95 degree temperatures are probably where you're going to get into the danger zone. Um, you saw on board three earlier my temperature was 91 and it showed up in yellow so that was warning me that i was getting too warm it's back down to 90 now because it's it's getting towards nighttime it's cooling down even more in my garage so i definitely need to repace this thing um it should be these temperatures should be lower without um having so much effort like i've got a fruition design kit um, nearly maxed out on this ks3m and my temperatures are cold in my garage so they i should be seeing cooler chip temps than this hopefully so anyway um RPM used this tool, it was an earlier version of this tool, to diagnose his KS3M and saved it before it burnt out. So he changed that chip paste and um, watch the rest of that video, you can see he dropped his uh, chip temperature significantly and his hash rate went way up, um, not overclocking or anything like that on the KS3M, just changing the um, paste alone increased his hash rate. So these chips um, need better paste on them and this tool helped diagnose that issue. Um, so anyway, um, you can get this uh, mining tool by going into my Discord or RPM's Discord. Um, my, if you go into mine, I'll tell you exactly where it's at. It's in the GGM Trusted Sellers. That's kind of where I put a lot of stuff for T-Swift. Um, and here is his contact info. If you ever wanted to buy anything from him, tell him Greater Group Mining sent you. It helps the channel out. And then here's a link to his Telegram. And this is where you'll see the mining tool uh, download. So here's the info from T-Swift on the monitoring tool talking about temperatures voltage the clocks and uh, information about ks0 pros like he's going to be updating this i'm sure as time goes on so um here's where you download it i'm not going to show you how to download it just click on the link download the tool and then you'll see um, the monitoring tool um, available in the like extracted file so um, you should be able to figure that out so uh go ahead and download that tool if you want to try it out and you might save yourself <laughs> a couple thousand bucks on a ice river that might be down if, you, if it burns out. Anyway, before I move on 
a quick word from the sponsor of this video. You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job, whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result. And we're back. So another common problem that I've been hearing about and seeing um, multiple places like Twitter, Discord, um, a lot of people that are running monitoring software or even uh, it sounds like sometimes nice, nice hash is causing the um, web server to run out of memory or uh, the ice river uh, maybe itself is not doesn't have enough memory to store so much information so um, it seems to glitch the ice rivers out or sometimes people can't log into the web GUI so um, probably the best thing to do is if you're having this problem um, just like do a hard reset on your miner bring it back um, to stock and then you know reset it up like you did um, if you have overclocks reapply the overclocks and then just monitor it from your web GUI like your ice river web GUI or you can monitor at the pool, or you can use that tool that I just showed you, um, the Ice River monitoring tool that T-Swift uh, has made free for the community. So um, those are probably better options for now. Um, the, it sounds like these Ice Rivers will glitch out if you um, use these this monitoring software or sometimes even Ice Hash. So that's tip number two. Um, for now, just skip those things. Um, they seem to be causing all kinds of problems. Tip number three is to get some backup parts for these ice rivers. Um, I have backup control boards. I have backup power supplies for my ice river miners. Um, it's kind of like inexpensive insurance. I even had uh, just bought some backup spoofers for my uh, Fruition design, Designs Kit. I'm gonna do another video tomorrow where I show uh, I'm troubleshooting my KS3 M. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that video tomorrow, but um, having some backup parts would have saved me some downtime. Um, having backup parts already has saved me some downtime and made troubleshooting so much easier. Um, uptime for these is so important right now. Look at this hash rate. Look at the Casper mining hash rate. Um, you know, in October, November, let's see, November, this was 65 peta hash, November 20th, December 20th. Like pretty much doubled like 122 125 and now we've hit this like little plateau so you guys kind of can see almost from this graph how batches get released and then you kind of have this like almost like steady rise like very fast rise and then it kind of levels off for a little while still a steady rise but not as drastic and then another batch comes out and boom you get the steady rise and then it levels off for a while we had like a kind of steady period here for a while before the next batch came and then overclocks came and then just look at this it's 140 petahash pretty consistently now so you can see since around january 1st it's kind of leveled off around the 135 to 140 range um, but just like before i'm sure there's going to be other miners the gold shell's got miners coming out um, you know i'm sure ice river will have uh updated models they got the ks0 pro now that hashes um, higher than the KS0. Um, so I'm sure that all these companies are going to bring more miners out that are more efficient or more powerful at some point. So you'll, you'll just keep seeing this hash rate going up. So uptime is very important right now. Um, that's why I have some backup parts. Um, that's just my tip. Um, it's helped me already a few times with troubleshooting and getting these things back up quickly. If you don't have these parts around, you can pay um, extra to have them shipped faster from iceriver.io, but it's still a very long time to be down so i would recommend if say you got a ks2 or something maybe just get a backup control board um if you can if you can spare a little few extra bucks get a backup power supply um that'll save you uh some downtime so um you know not nothing i ever say is financial advice but um and i know it's hard to roi on these things now and this is um several several days of roi <laughs> to buy one of these for ks2 but can you imagine if your KS2 goes down 
and you didn't have a backup power supply and that was the problem and now you're waiting weeks for one to arrive that's so much lost money and then you know by the time you get it the hash rate goes up even more so um anyway if you're in it for the long haul like i am uh i'm gonna keep these cast miners going you know hopefully for as long as possible um and before the next you know bull run i want to stack as much caspa as i can so anyway that's just another tip just check out iceriver.io um there's backup parts for some of these things and uh you know if you got a fruition designs kit maybe get a few backup spoofers things like that that way you don't have to be down for something small anyway that's it for this video i hope it was helpful uh if it was please hit the like button it really does help out the channel uh consider subscribing to my channel i do stuff like this all the time where i'm trying to um you know improve on the ice river caspa a6 I, I do all kinds of stuff with crypto mining in general so um subscribe if you like this kind of content and then um i will try to continue to make videos like this where i just do maybe you know two or three good uh troubleshooting tips um i hope that minor tool is helpful to you guys i think it's really cool i love being able to see my chip temps so anyway um i hope it was helpful and um please hit the like button subscribe and don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good the greater good